don't forget to wear your mask. Upon entry, we will be checking temperatures to ensure the safety of all attendees. This month, this series, it's going to tear you apart and you gotta be ready gotta for be it. Ready for it. How is your soul? How is your soul? How's your soul? How's your soul? How's your soul? How's your soul? Gotta be ready for it. I like to read a verse from the Bible. Matthew 11, verse 28 says, Come to me, all who are late, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Jesus is saying that with all those burdens, he wants to give you his burdens because his burdens are light. He wants to do a transaction. Take your worries, take your issues, and give you his joy, his peace, and his love. So today when you find yourself being burdened by life troubles, remember, take time to give your soul rest by spending some time with the Lord. How is your soul? How's your soul? This series, it's going to tear you apart and you gotta be ready for it. We have an amazing opportunity to walk our arts group to do an incredible documentary about people who have joined our church and the three E's, encouragement, enlightenment, but that last, the empowerment. We want to highlight how many of you purchased a home while being under the ministry of TKC. That's number one. Number two, we want to highlight how many of you started a business while being at TKC. Number three, we want you to categorize, if you're a business owner, how much financial support you've gotten from doing business within the church. We want to do a docu-series. It's going to be dope. I want to show the power of the urban church when we put our minds together, our hands together, and our resources together, and how we can have money circulate in our own community. Let's be the model. Seven and five. Let me read it to y'all because it be keeping my mind, okay? It says, For in the time of trouble, which I feel this is a time of trouble, COVID times, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up, up upon a rock. I don't want to be under nobody else's tabernacle, okay? I don't want nobody else to hide me. And when I think about it, I just think of God placing me on top of a rock and me just looking down, praying for others. That's my comfort. How is your soul? How's your soul? How's your soul? Cut, beautiful, thank you. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that was so Hollywood. The 
does its best work on the bottom, it's not when you see it that you value it. It's when you don't see it, you recognize the value of the anchor. The anchor doesn't show up. It's not a helicopter. Ooh, it's not a helicopter. It doesn't come and pick you up and take you out of trouble. An anchor holds you in trouble, but it doesn't remove you out of trouble. It holds you in trouble. It just makes sure that trouble comes, but my soul don't drift away. Trouble comes, but my soul don't move. Trouble comes, but my soul holds still. I know you want Jesus to take you out, but Jesus is not going to take you out. He's an anchor to your soul. He's going to do the work when you don't see it. When you don't see it. And Pastor, I ain't seen God. I haven't felt him. He does his best work when you don't see him, church. He does his best when you can't identify him, church. This series, it's going to tear you apart and you gotta be ready for it. How is it so? Dear God, you're worthy, you're mighty, you're awesome, oh God. So Lord, right now, God, we just say thank you, God, for this moment, God, that you blessed us with to be in your presence, oh Father God. We ask, God, that you would have your way on today, oh God, that you would touch the people, oh God. We thank you, God, that they would hear your word like never before, oh God, that they would have an experience with you like never before, oh Father God. I thank you, God, that even now, God, that you're touching their hearts, oh God. And even as you touch their hearts, oh God, may their soul, God, be blessed, oh God. May their soul glow, oh God. May it grow, oh God, in you, oh God. So, Lord, right now, oh God, we thank you, God, for every praise and worship song that will be sung and ministered on today, oh God. We thank you, God, that those that are coming in with troubles, with sickness, with doubt, with fear, oh God, that you would have your way like never before in their life, oh God. Lord, right now, oh God, we decree and we declare, God, that we will praise your name, oh God, in spirit and in truth, oh God. Lord, we thank you right now, God, that you would touch the vessel, God, Pastor David, oh God, as he brings forth a word, a rhema word, a right now word, an on-time word, oh God. We thank you, Father God, that you would dwell in him, oh God, and as he speaks your word, oh God, let it touch our hearts, oh God, let it touch our souls, oh God, let it stir us from the inside out, oh God, hallelujah, God, we thank you, Father God, that your presence is in this place, oh God. If you are believing God for great things, if you're believing God to protecting your heart this morning, if you're believing him for touching the depth of your soul, give God a shout of praise in this place. Give God a shout of praise in this place. Hallelujah, God. You're worthy, God. You're mighty, God. We serve an awesome God. We serve an on-time God. We serve a risen God. And it's in your precious Son, Jesus' name, that I do pray. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Happy Sunday. Are you excited to be in the presence of the Lord? Come on, I need to see everybody stand in the room. You may be online. I just want to welcome you into the presence of the Lord and let you know that we serve a big God. He's great. He's mighty. He's awesome. There is nothing that he can't do. So if you're home, I want to see you put your hands on it. Come on. See you put your hands on it, clap, clap. Yeah, yeah. All right, now y'all know the song is real simple. It says, My God is big, so strong, so mighty. My God, and for me, goes beyond. So strong, so, strong, so mighty. 
Don't give up on God Cause he won't give up on you Don't give up on God It's so easy to give up It's so easy to give up But he's not a man that he should lie Nor the son of man he shall repent If he said he would do it Surely it will come to pass Don't give up on God Cause he won't give up Cause he's the king of glory The Lord strong and mighty Not only that, he's the Lord mighty in battle So all you gotta do as a believer is lift up your head, all your gates And be lifted up the everlasting door And let the king of glory come in Who is the king of glory? He's the Lord strong and he's always been mighty And he's fighting on your behalf can you just raise up your hands in this room? Open your mouth in this moment. And I just need you for the next 20 seconds just to release a worship in this room. I'm talking about a fearless worship. I'm talking about a relentless worship. I'm talking about a worship that doesn't look at what they're going through. But a worship that knows who they serve. Can you just open your mouth and release a shout in this room? Yes, the world will bow down and say you got everything. Will bow down and say you a king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? Come on, kingdom. Just raise it up, King of Glory. King of Glory. Feel this place. Just wanna be with you. Hey. Come on, let's raise it up. Yes, the world sing. Bow down and sing.
Raise it. We worship you. Rosard. And I'm Nastashi Lewis. And here are TKC announcements. Woo!
faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm so excited to tell you that we don't make excuses, we make adjustments. And for this season, like a show, we're doing a different season on Wednesday night. We're doing Faith Talk on Wednesday nights, and I want to pass it over to Pastor g -Paw. Hey, you heard it correctly. We're moving from Thursday nights to Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, starting August the 19th. We're looking forward for you to joining with us online. We're going through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelations. We're already halfway through the Bible. So come on and join us on Wednesday night. We look forward to seeing you then. Peace. Like th that's your problem. You always worry about the wrong thing. You, I want your attention. What do you want me to do? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? I want you to be who you were in the beginning. I'm just trying to talk to you. You so focused on what you focused on that you won't pay me attention. It's time for TKC Marriage Enrichment's Naked and Unashamed. Oh, this is gonna be lit. We are relaunching our sessions via Zoom. Y'all better, better be there. Every fourth Wednesday of the month, starting Wednesday, August 26th at 7 p.m. You don't wanna miss these sessions. Whether you're married, engaged, or seriously dating, we wanna see you there. Let us know that you're planning to attend by texting the word couples to 407 Four four nine eight 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 four. Grab your honey and meet us on Zoom. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Guys, thank you so much for watching our TKC announcements. Remember to follow God, love people, and change the city. Good morning, God's people. I have the pleasure, my name is Will, for those that don't know me. I have the pleasure of bringing you guys some soul food this morning. Y'all ready? Change this up so many times to the very last minute. How's your soul? How's your soul? That's an important question. Not suggesting confession, but self-reflection. I wear glasses so I can see a little clearer, but my soul is never impressed with the flesh in the mirror. How's your soul? My soul grows old and struggles for rest. My soul resents my spirit for being free while stuck in this flesh. How's your soul? My soul is grieving. My soul has the audacity to question the God we believe in. He took so many of my people home this year and my fear is who else might be leaving? Someone murdered my little cousin and my soul still wants to get even. My soul wants that soul snuffed out before this evening. That's how I feel, for real. And if you didn't know, now you know. But what kills me most is that I never got to ask my little cousin Danny, how's your soul? How's your soul? My soul's in danger filled with too much anger. My soul is rooted in Christ. But how deep is the anchor? How's your soul? My soul think we smoother than lotion. My soul swear we logical while influenced by emotion, governed by feelings. But all glory be to God, my soul is healing. My soul be kneeling. My soul pray. My soul fears no predator. My soul ain't pray. How's your soul? My soul is hurt, covered in dirt, overworked, not paid its worth. My soul more valuable 
than the price of gold. Bought with the blood of Christ so it can't be sold. Christ paid the full price so my soul don't owe. So my soul won't ever borrow. The crowd I'll never follow. My soul sets trends. My soul has no memories of enemies. My soul gets friends. My soul is cleansed. That's right. Y'all can soul hate. The blood of Christ got my soul more white than Colgate. My soul was lonely until God sent my one and only wife and soulmate. My soul ain't weak. I can carry the whole weight of my cross on my back without taking no break. How's your soul? My soul is giving. My soul is kind. My soul is loving. My soul divine. My soul speaks up. My soul don't mumble. My soul as bold as a lion in the untamed jungle, but still meek and humble. Solid don't crumble, so my soul won't fold. My soul is swole. My soul got goals. Many other plans in a man's heart, but only God's purpose prevails. My soul wins. My soul fails. My soul's strong. My soul's frail. How's your soul? How much control does my soul got? How do I show that I know God? Should I dress up in a suit and tie? Or can I just be myself and look super fly? My soul tall. My soul dark. My soul handsome with it. My soul follow God. My soul love people. My soul gonna change the city. How's your soul? How's your soul? Listen, welcome those who are watching online. Those of you watching in the sanctuary, clap your hands if you're happy to actually be in the actual house of God. Uh, it is imperative this day that we get the privilege and the honor to serve God as it relates to being generous. You know what we've been doing in our community and community context as well. If you can give me more monitor as well, appreciate that. So as you can see, we are still working towards garnishing the revenue to change out all of our lighting systems. And so we are asking for some of you to give a thousand, some of you have, and we appreciate you doing that. I wanna challenge many of you this morning, if I can get 40, that does 250, and a lot of you can, because I know a lot of you. A lot of you have the capacity to do it, so if you would do it. That does not mean taking away from your tithe. That does not mean taking away from your offering. We're gonna redo our entire lighting system, have whole new lights set up, because this one blew out, because it gets too hot, all this type of stuff. So we wanna eliminate that and make this as home as we can make it. You ever move into a house, and you got so many things you need to renovate and upgrade and do, or, you have so many things you need to change out, and these are the things that we are endeavoring to do. Here's what I want you to do. I don't want you to hear the number 250 and say, oh man, that's not me, I'm not giving anything. I just want you to do, those of you that respond to trusting in God, if you trust God like we should all trust God. I can't just trust Him with my soul, I also must trust Him with my money. And in this moment, this is a prestigious opportunity for us to measure where our faith is. It is a time to measure where our faith is. You can't tithe off of what you don't have. If you don't have increase, you can't tithe off of it. But if you do, if you work for the county, if you work for the law office, if you work for the state agency, if you work for your own business, if you work selling real estate, if you work a nine to five, if you're a teacher, your tenth belongs to the Lord. And in this moment, don't just ignore it as if it doesn't matter because God sees. And there's no reason to go to God and act like he doesn't know when he knows. And so I challenge and implore you this day to do what's right before God. And if you're in the sanctuary, we thank you so much for doing your part. And there are various means to give. You can mobile push pay, which is the various, which is the primary means we ask that you do is 77977, text TKCI. Uh, you can use your envelope in the sanctuary. If you need an envelope, you can lift your hands and the ushers. Um, the hugs department will get you a envelope. You can cash app, which is the very famous way that a lot of people like to use. It is TKCI, dollar sign, TKCI. That is a new new way of giving that wasn't around when I was a kid. And then there's the traditional online. You go directly to TKCI.org, and you can give that way. If you need an envelope in the sanctuary, just lift your hands. We will bring it to you. We're not going to pass it so that no one is touching envelopes. But if you need an envelope, we will bring it to you. Just lift your hand, and our ushers will get it to you. Ten seconds, if everybody's doing it, 
I guess everybody's moved on to electronic. All right. So let's, let's all take a moment and do that electronically, however you do it. Let's do it collectively together. Let's do it collectively together. Even if you're in the sanctuary, let's collectively do our part. Each and every one of you has to do their part in this moment. Or we don't have a church, we don't have a ministry without you doing your part. So I want you to pray. I want you to consider what it is that God is asking you to do. I want some of you to sacrifice and do that and stretch and go beyond what is comfortable for you. And you know we are going to do what we're going to do with this lighting piece. We raised so far close to $3,000. And additionally, we want to get to 7000 before we make that expense. And so you might say, well, why is lighting so expensive? It, it, it's, it's significant because number one, these lights are hot lights. If you keep them on too long, they can blow and cause fires. They were they were good in the 80s. They're not good in 2000s. And so you change them to LEDs because LEDs, one, they don't run up your power bill as much and it's not as hot. And so it create and it doesn't cause your AC to work over time. So you save over the life of that investment. So please consider it. Uh, grab your phones out. Every person, grab your phone out. And give something and give regarding your tithe, which belongs to the Lord. As the band takes us away a few minutes, go ahead and honor the Lord with that. that are watching. Thank you for those contributing online. As you are contributing online, would you do me another favor? Would you share this broadcast when you get a chance? Do that. We want to get the word out a lot more monitor, please. We want to get the word out so that you and I can be beneficiaries of the word. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the seed that we give. It's given into the kingdom of God, going to be used to advance your work. May you bless it. May you multiply it. May you cause it to advance your house in a precious way. Multiply every dollar that has come in and then multiply it back to the giver in a way that they need. You know exactly what they need and how they need it. And I pray you would give it to them as only you can. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you need to be collected in the sanctuary, just raise your hand. They're coming to you. Those of you online, you don't need to raise your hand because you could do it right from the convenience of your own home. And we thank you in advance for doing it week and week and week and week after week. Week and week and week after week. Week in and week after week. 
I want to tell you all about my water's on the floor, Bruce. Can you grab that for me? I want to tell you about voting because it is so important that you get out and vote. If you have not voting voted, early voting begins. Thank you. Early voting begins um, or ends. So I say today. You have up until today to go anywhere and vote. I was out there yesterday for two, about two hours, my wife and I, uh, watching so many minorities say, I'm going to vote on Wednesday. Voting ends Tuesday. And what is a shame is that so many people died so you could post your opinion, but it doesn't move you to go to the ballot box and vote. If you go to this church watching online, I don't care who you vote for. You need to go vote. Or they will continue to treat minorities the same because they know that all you and I will do is go march in the sun, but won't take three minutes to go in the booth. We cannot fight for you if you don't care about yourself, period. So I, I, was, I was alarmed, concerned, and only 8% of our community, Pastor Audi, has voted. That includes mail-in ballots as of 1.30 yesterday. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not telling you who to vote for or what to vote for. I'm simply telling you that if you don't vote, you can keep praying. It's not going to change. It will change. Prayer does change things. But we need to do our part. We can't just rely on the sovereignty of God to do everything. There's a responsibility of humanity that has to play a part. And a lot of the conditions of our community, I realized yesterday, is because we choose it. We were at Burlington shopping. I ain't got no time. It's shorter today than it'll ever be. So I encourage you, I don't want to get on this horse, but I, I definitely don't want to get the emails, Pastor, can you help my child? Because they got this issue, and it's like, did you vote? No, I didn't. I didn't vote. I didn't vote. So, listen, I'm going to tell you, and I hope it makes you mad enough to know. When we sit with powerful people and they sit and talk to me, this is what they tell me. Your people just going to get mad. They ain't going to vote. So we don't need to consider them. We'll just appease them. I can't get mad after what I saw yesterday. We don't vote. So today there's voting everywhere. You can go to library, you can go vote. You can go all different places that are voting stations and go vote. Do not leave this week undone. All right? Okay, let's get into the word of God. Uh, married couples, engaged couples, booed up couples. We want to have a great time with you. Please text the word couples to 407-449-8884. And those of you who have ministry at your aspirations and things like that, I want all of you to be a part of this class. Pastor Allen is going to close this out. He'll tell you about it. Some of you like Marie Buchanan, you need to be a part of the class. And so a whole host of you need to jump in and be a part of this class. That would be so uh, Jermaine Barnes, all these individuals that, uh, that have aspirations that would be helpful. Uh, good to see you, Pastor Forrest from Tampa. Come to worship with us this morning. All right, John chapter number 12. We've been teaching about Gaius for a while. First John 3, I wish above all that your soul would prosper and be in health. Now you know that story. Now no one can fool you and tell you, well, God wants everybody to prosper. No, that was a passage for someone that was sick. Uh, it is, it is, in the words of Pastor Outing, it is a descriptive passage, not a prescriptive passage for everybody. It was describing a circumstance. But today, I want to talk about something that most people probably don't preach about. And I know today is going to be a great service because William's here. Uh, this is going to be a great service because I want to tell you about this particular individual that you don't hear many sermons about. He doesn't get many attention or Sunday morning airtime. But he's a powerful one. And, and when you deal with the heart, this guy is someone that you can't overlook. You won't name your children after him, but he's a guy that shouldn't be missed. You probably won't call anybody that you love this person's name, but he's a powerful figure. To we preach about all the disciples, but we oftentimes skip this brother. And this brother's a major dude. His name is Judas. Now, I, 
haven't dedicated any babies. Nate, I know you're planning to have a couple more. I haven't dedicated any babies, and I don't know anybody who's named their children Judas. I haven't seen anybody just say, Pastor, I'm going to name this one Judas because this is the... No, everybody runs to Matthew, John, right? We, we don't, we don't want to... Uh, what's this? Oh, man, this is Kim. This is Bumshika. And, and then this is Judas. Oh, uh, keep my purse away from him, right? Because we just have this mentality about Judas. But let me read John chapter number 12. I want you to write the note. Also, you're going to write down Acts chapter number 1. You're going to read that on your time. Acts chapter number 1, you're going to read that on your time. And I'm also going to read Proverbs 4.23. You want to write that note in Proverbs 21.2. It says this, John 12, it says, verse number three, this is the passage about Lazarus, when Lazarus was, was dying or dead, and then Jesus comes on the scene, but that's not what I'm focused on. Uh, he says, here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took about a pint, a pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped it, wiped his feet with her hair. That's powerful, number one. They didn't have wigs back then, so that was her own hair. All right. <laughs> number two, just lost five members right there. And number, number two, your hair was your glory. So she took her glory and wiped his feet with it. She took the most, in those cultures, hair was important. She took the most identifiable thing about herself and threw it at his feet. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. But anyway, then Mary took his and, and, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and money given to the poor? It's worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He was a keeper of the money bag. He used to help himself to what was put in it. Ooh, ooh there's so much in there. Jesus, the son of God, the man who knows time before time existed, the righteous one, the one who has foreknowledge, in his providence, he puts 12 men together and he picks one and puts the man that he knows is a thief over the money. Mm. Jesus, if you have all of this wisdom, all of this intellect, why would you put a man that, that is a thief over your money? Because Jesus was also teaching principles, but also giving us a visual example of how to deal with Judases that will be in your life. Now, I don't want to turn this message into you going off on this tangent about who the Judas is on your life that betrayed you. Because that's such an easy way to get the church to say, oh yeah, I know everybody in this room has someone who has betrayed them, has someone who has tried them. But I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about you who betray you. I have dealt with high-level individuals and have seen individuals who could light up a room. I've seen couples online who look amazing. I've seen sisters with outfits that are on point. I've seen brothers who physically dress well, well put together, but underneath the heart was corroding. In 1872, Washington Roebling, the chief engineer of the Brooklyn Bridge, held a press conference because the people of New York were complaining that they've given all of this money and they do not see a bridge. Roblin began to explain that the work under the water line was more critical than the work above the water. In order for the bridge to stand the test of time, the work below the water line, the foundation, had to be completed first. And it had to be done right. For more than over 150 years, the Brooklyn Bridge has stood. Why? Because soul care is important because what happens below the surface is more significant than what happens above the surface. I want to delve into a subject matter that only, that only can be done by a master surgeon. 
it is, has to be done by someone extremely skilled. According to Jeremiah, the heart is deceitful and only God can know it. I want to delve into the life of Judas and highlight what I would like to call this morning a heart attack. A man who was handpicked, although the son of perdition, but his soul underneath had corroded. He had a spiritual heart attack. During a heart attack, beloved, tissue in your heart muscles die due to lack of blood flow through the heart arteries. A heart attack occurs when the flow of blood to the heart is blocked. And I want to ask you a question today. Is your heart blocked? Proverbs 21 2 says this, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. Only God can weigh your heart. Now, I know your words may sound like they're heavy, but God doesn't weigh your words. He weighs your heart. Proverbs 4, 23, very important verse says this. It says, guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. If there's one thing God told you to guard, it is to guard your heart. Let me give you a theology of Judas. Judas' name in the Greek version means Judah, which means that God put a praiser over the money. Whew, that's so good. His name means Judah in Hebrew, which means praise. And so you would imagine that the person that every time Jesus said something, he'd get in the shout, just start dancing, just start dancing. And you would think, man, this guy has to be the guy over the money because his heart is towards God. But your outward manifestation could be one and your inward could be a whole nother thing. Judas also means, roughly means, let God be praised. However, Iscariot is not clear. It is widely held that it was a city in Palestine. It was kind of a description like, you know, like, oh, that's Bob from New Orleans or that's Jim from L.A. That this was what Judas was. He, Judas, and I got to give you this because it has to all make sense and I'm going somewhere. Trust me, it's going to be great. Uh, he he would have been from the southern part of Judah, which means all of the disciples were chosen from Galilee except for him. He was the only one chosen from Judah. All of the disciples were Galileans. He's the only one that was different. And in that time, Rome had set up their kingdom. And it was really a political climate that was tense, oppression. You could even say it's like today. Everybody was kind of looking for that person that's going to lead them into what is a better tomorrow. And everybody was looking for a candidate that they could find. So some people were not just looking at Jesus as a religious figure. They were looking at Jesus to be their president in our terms. They were hoping that he would be the change that they've been waiting on. And Judas felt, surely, I, can, I got a position and I'm going to be the man next to the man in power and I'm going to be up in it. And God says to Judas, Judas, you know what? I'm going to give you a position. I'm going to give you a position, Judas, to look over the money. And all the disciples didn't object to it because even at the Last Supper when God says, somebody's going to betray me, nobody said, it's got to be Judas. Everybody looked around and thought, well, what is he talking about? Who, who would betray him? It's certainly not Judas. Because Judas, all of the time Judas was seeing things, Judas' heart was being tested. Every time someone would give an offering to Jesus' ministry, they'd put it in the treasury bag and Judas would have it and he'd see the money. Can you see Judas' eyes? He likes some church members. Can you believe Judas got an offering? They, they said, Pastor, you blessed me, Pastor Jesus. I can't believe how much you blessed me. I'm going to give you $200. And Judas was like, that's a lot of money to give to the church. Judas held the money in his hand. He knew it. He slept with it. He rested with it. And, and every time someone would put money in, his heart would be revealed. See, this is the thing you got to understand. Your heart will tell on you before your mouth does. Because Judas, when the money was given, Judas says, you know what? Uh, um, 
Um, th this money that was given, it, it could have been used for the poor. No, no, no. Judas was identifying his struggle. And a lot of times we ignore what people are saying. And what they're saying is a direct reflection of where their heart is. Some, you know, I could do so much better without you. I'm just joking. No, you mean it. Because oftentimes in every joke at times, there's a level of truth. Because if you don't guard the heart, the heart's going to eventually leak out what it feels. Oh, y'all got to hear me. And some would say, well, you know what, man, if, if your heart is, if your heart is messed up, you should be all, you'll be all right. Time will heal it. That is not true because here's the thing. Moses' heart was messed up and time did not heal Moses. Time did not heal the wounds of Moses. It just expanded it. And so here we are. This man is over the money and this lady comes and She's bringing this perfume and, and Judas is like, man, that's a lot of money. Because when you love money like that, it controls you. Some of you love God. You don't really love God. You love God because God gets you money. No, no, no. You don't love God. You know, because because the heart, that's why scripture says where your, where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. Judas was, was there and they said, well, how, how, much, how much money are you giving to this man? He said, well, that's a year's worth of salary you just put in the offering. That's too much. But Judas wasn't tripping because he knew, oh, she put a year's worth of money in there? I'm about to take me 5%. And ain't nobody going to know. Oh, don't judge Judas like that because how many people stealing from your life? You don't even recognize it because they're stealing from you slowly. Oh yeah, Judas is, Judas is man maneuvering his way around and trying to figure out, but Judas never, got, he heard all the teachings of Jesus. He's seen all the miracles of Jesus, but it never changed his heart because if you don't guard your heart, your heart will go where it wants. So here it is. <laughs> he says this he says here listen to this Judas heard great sermons seeing people come to Calvary come people get saved but it never changed his heart because here's the thing if you don't truly repent you'll just keep repeating because when your heart isn't fixed because here's the thing remorse is not repentance Judas felt bad, Acts chapter number one, gives all the money back, feels really sorry about it, but doesn't feel sorry enough to repent from it. And here's the reality. Judas' way of life was so twisted that he couldn't find his way back. That Jesus was just a means to fix his addiction. I don't know what happened to Judas. Maybe Maybe, I don't know, the text doesn't tell me, but maybe Judas got into a competition with one of the disciples and maybe they picked on him because he wasn't from Galilee and he felt some type of way and was offended by them and just disconnected from them. Because here's the reality, Judas left Jesus far before he left them in the garden. Let me say it a different way. People leave your life before they leave your life. Oh no, when you realize they left your life, they've been gone. I don't know what you're talking about. You're talking about this marriage has been uh, down the tube this last year. No, nah, baby, they left you a long time ago. You're just getting the notice now because it doesn't just happen. I will tell you this, a member of a church will leave a church in their heart before they leave with their feet. You hear what I'm saying? So, so this is important because if you don't guard your heart, you'll abuse the people that are trying to help you. Can you imagine if Judas would have came to Jesus and said, this is what I need. I need you to touch my heart. God would have touched him. But when your heart isn't right, even your help looks like an enemy. Lord have mercy. Woo, here it is. Y'all ready for this? Somebody wrote this. It's not mine. When your heart is hurt, you need to hush until it heals. When your heart is hurt, you need to hush until it heals. Because when someone breaks your heart, what will come out your mouth will not be a reflection of what you really feel. 
That's why it's better to wait. Can you imagine when the disciples found out that Judas was stealing? They probably wanted to put them hands on him. But you know what? Sometimes you need to take a moment and breathe before you say what's really in your heart. Because if you don't do what is in your heart, eventually your heart will lead you down a path you don't want to go. The heart above all is deceptive. Here it is. I want to give you about seven or eight different conditions of the heart. Hmm. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Unlike cardiac arrest, the heart usually doesn't stop beating during a heart attack. The longer a person goes without treatment, the greater the damage. So the longer your heart is broken and you don't get it fixed, the greater the damage you're doing to yourself. You know, most people cannot be wedded by anybody because their heart is too damaged to be loved or repaired. Come on, church. All the stuff you've been through this year, if you don't guard your heart, you may be on some ganja by the end of the week. Because out of the heart flows the issues of life. Well, you can look deep all you want. Sitting up in the church, drunk as a skunk, drinking your way to bed every night because your heart is broke and you're trying to figure it out and you're reading all what everybody else is doing and you're trying to be in the know like everybody else. You're trying to win, but when you're trying to win, your life keeps losing and when you feel like you're losing, you end up stealing from someone else. No, you just don't steal money from people. Some of you steal people's peace. Oh no, you're not Judas. You don't steal money because that will get you caught. You steal people's character. You steal people's self-worth. Why? Because your heart is broken. You can, you can do all that you want to do. If your heart ain't fixed, you can't dress up an ugly heart. Yeah. Sometimes the grace of God, somebody might have said, Judas might have said, I want to be the treasurer. And God might have told him, Rob, I, I don't, I, L -O -R, Rob, I, I, I don't think you need to be the treasurer. And Judas might say, no, God, I got to be, you got to put me as a treasure. I want to be it. I want to be it. And sometimes the grace of God is trying to keep you from what you like because what you like may not like you back. He, he was so committed to being around the money when the money was his weakness. And here he goes to Jesus. He walks up in the garden. And they don't even recognize who Jesus is. That's a good preaching point. Jesus fit in so much with the community that they didn't recognize he was the star. They needed someone to identify him because he dressed like them. He was among them. He sat with them. And Judas walks up to him and kisses him on the cheek. Whew, hey, you ready for this? It's going to get heavy. Some kisses are not affection. They're kisses of infection. Woo! Some kisses are not affection. They're kisses of infection. And you may misinterpret just because they kissed you doesn't mean they ain't stealing from you. Just because they kiss you doesn't mean they ain't taken from you. Just because they kiss you doesn't mean they really love you. You got to be sure that the kiss is a kiss of affection and not infection. buy this CD myself. Here it is. Number one, your heart is dry. It's just dry. It's like a dry season. That makes you happy. That makes you great. It's just dry. All of these are seasons our hearts go through. Don't look at it and say, no, nah, that's somebody else. No, if you're not careful, your heart can grow dry. If you don't water your heart, it'll grow dry. It's like a tree, a grass. If you don't water grass, it dries up. It's not the grass is the issue. It's the fact that the grass has not been properly nutrient. It doesn't get the nutrients that it needs, and then it ends up drying up. And if you don't spend enough time to the, not just with God, hear what I said, because church does a good job using God to avoid spending time with people. If you don't spend time with people, your heart will dry up. 
That's why people be married 40 years and after 40 years they divorce. Why? Because y'all spent all your time around the kids. Now the kids are gone, your heart's been dry. And now all you got is hearts that are breaking off of pieces. Your heart is dry. If you don't feed your heart spiritually, your heart will dry up. If you don't feed your heart with each other, persons, your heart will dry up. Man, me and my friend, we ain't talked for years. It's going to be a dry relationship. Because it needs to be watered. Number two, your heart's distracted. Your heart's distracted. Judah's heart had to be dry because he was around Jesus, but he wasn't with Jesus. Because just because I'm around you doesn't mean I'm with you. Don't misinterpret getting dressed and driving to church means you're with Jesus. Number two, distracted. When a heart's distracted, it loses its attraction to the main thing. What's taking your attraction? I know we're in August and we're thinking about all the entanglements that have happened. But what, what has, what has, what has distracted you? What has disattracted you? Woo, number three, y'all ready? Depleted. You ain't got nothing else to give. Pastor David P., if you haven't journeyed through it yet, you will. You could give so much that you have nothing left to give. You're depleted. You have nothing left to give. Depleted. Eh. Depleted. If you're not constantly being refilled, then your heart will deplete. That, that goes spiritually, that goes naturally. If I'm always telling you you look nice and you never say anything, eventually it's going to get depleted. It's, it's got to be, it's, it's got to be filled. It's got to be filled. Oh, listen, this is a good one. So when I went to Africa, what people do is they go to the well and they go get water and they get water from the well. What, well, what happens is, is when, when the well dries up, people go to get water, but there's no water. So what happens is people end up getting mud. See, when you're depleted, people come to you for water, and what they get is mud instead. All right, no, 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 so, so de, your heart is depleted. Heart is depleted. Num, number four. Woo, this is important. Distant. Just because you're close, just because you're near, doesn't mean you're close. Your heart can grow distant. You, I meet people all the time, especially going to the gym. They're like, man, I ain't been to church in years. How? It just started one day. I'm sure Judas didn't mean to start stealing. He just started stealing a dollar. A dollar became, a quarter became 50 cents. 50 cents became a dollar. A dollar became two dollars. Two dollars became four dollars. Four dollars became eight dollars. Eight dollars became ten dollars. Ten dollars became 20. And before you knew it, he was so distant. All right, four minutes to go. The next one is very important because you could feel defeated. Everything I do, I don't, it doesn't work out. Everything I try, I've tried this, it's gone bad. I've tried this. And when you feel defeated, you start trying to look for anything that can pick you up. I just want to be loved. I just want a job. I just, everything, I just feel like I started school and the kids are trying to log on and they can't log on and they're driving me crazy. They're asking for lunch and it's only 9 a.m. And I just, I don't know how to, I just feel so defeated. This launch ad, I want to launch all of them out. I don't know what to do. And you feel defeated. And when you feel defeated, you better be careful because people who feel defeated try to find something to make them feel victorious. So here it is, not just defeated. This one is hard. It's your heart is damaged. In a heart that's damaged, it's hard to fix. 
You may need to spend time before God. You may need to see a therapist. But most people whose hearts are damaged don't want to do the hard work to get it fixed. And all of us, if we're honest, have a level of degrees of damage. If you lose someone that you love, you lost a part of you, you're never going to get back. And you can dance your way around it, but you're still going to feel the effects of it in your life. The, the last one is, 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 is a stage that, that we all work to get to through the helping of the Holy Spirit, is to be delightful. That doesn't mean you don't have trials. It doesn't mean you don't have problems. That doesn't mean your heart hasn't been broken. It just simply means that I have made a decision that I'm going to rest in the joy of the Lord. And that's a hard place to be. It's a hard place to stay. Sometimes we, we are in it and then we move right back to distracted. We are in it and we move right back to dry. We are in it and we move right back to defeated. We are in it and we move right back to damage. But here's the reality. If you don't guard your heart, you've lost everything. People are the greatest gift God can give you and they're also the greatest destruction that you can encounter. And all of you that keep cutting people off, every time you cut someone off, you cut a part of you off too. Just know that. So one of the greatest challenges that God always is working with me as a leader on is you got to guard your heart. I don't care what they do, you got to guard. Because here's the thing, forgiveness is not about them, it's about you. Because you ever been around someone whose heart's been so damaged they can't enjoy the moment? You could be there that quick. Let me close with an example because I'm far over time. Um, a couple months ago, my alarm system in my home, um, it was given this indication that one of the sensors or motion detectors battery was low. Uh, the monitor system for the hallway was, was low and it was affecting the entire system of monitoring the house. So every time you go set the alarm, it would say low battery. It's been given warnings for months. It needed to be changed and I just kept ignoring it. I called one day to ADT and I said, hey, listen, uh, Ramsey sold me this system years ago when he was working for ADT, when he was selling everybody in the church ADT. And I said, um, I need to, this, this thing keeps showing the low battery. She said, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it in test mode, but you only got 48 hours to get it rectified. If you don't fix it during test mode, we got to start the process all over again. And of course, that required me to give attention to something that I really didn't want to deal with at the moment. So I put it off. And I thought, hey, I'll be fine. I was able to go to get up, go to work. I was able to do a whole bunch of things for several weeks not doing what I need to do with that 48-hour window. Well, one night, a couple days ago, I ignored the opportunity to repair internally what would have made everything externally better. One night at 2.30 in the morning, wife hears this chime and she says, what's that? I said, I don't know. We hear the chime again and I'm like, I think that's the alarm system. I get up, I look at the system and it says zero 09. So I, I realize I put the alarm code in and now it won't let me arm the alarm. It won't let me disarm it. I said, well, let me go to bed and I'll fix it in the morning. But then I said, well, maybe it might be someone outside playing with my alarm system. And then they turned it off on me because they figured I'd be lazy and not call ADT. So I said, oh, let me go fix it. So I got my, made sure my gun was fully loaded with the name of Jesus all on the bullets. Praise God. I have several of them just in case. Uh, anyway, uh, and so here's what happened is um, I then begin to um, call ADT at 2.30 in the morning. And I called ADT and I said, hey, sorry to call y'all so late, um, but my system is not working properly. She said, Mr. Jacques, did you change the alarm when we had put it in test mode? I said, no, I did not. She said, well, sir, 
because you neglected to do what you were supposed to do, your system is not working properly. You're going to have to bypass that part of your home. So I said, what do you mean? She said, well, technically what that means is that part won't be working. You still can function, but just know that part of your home has no coverage. And some of you are functioning, but that part of your heart has no coverage. Some of you still getting degrees and you still got nice pictures online, but that part of your heart is not working. Some of you still succeeding, making money and progressing, but that part of your heart is not working. And what I come to realize a couple days ago, bringing this thing in, that this little tiny battery right here, that I would not adjust, has now caused my entire home not to function properly. Oh, the person that you don't want to talk to because they tried you is now affecting your whole entire life from running properly. Oh, that person that you say, I will never deal with is now holding you hostage from loving people properly. That little battery that you said, I'll get to it when I want to, is beeping. And every time people get around you, they keep seeing the warning signs of a broken heart that won't submit itself to get fixed properly. And if you don't fix it properly, your heart will then begin to interrupt a good season of your life. You're sleeping and all of a sudden your heart goes off. Somebody makes you mad and now your heart goes off. You, 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 someone said something to you, now your heart goes off. Why? Because you wouldn't change the battery when you had the window to change it. And I want to challenge you today. Change your battery. Give your heart to the one who specializes in heart care. Man, listen, I'm telling you, every single opportunity you get, you got to bring your heart to the altar. Don't let this heart trick you. You've been divorced two times. You think you're just over it? This battery will let you function without it, but there'll be a piece that doesn't work. So every day, make it part of your prayer. Lord, here's my heart. Mold it. Transform it. When you've been, can I tell you, when you've been damaged really roughly, some of us have built in systems, because I know this is kind of some theory, some of us have built in systems in our heart to protect us. You, you got to make sure those systems that you have to protect you doesn't harm you. Because some of us got a disconnect switch. It's powerful. It's a, you're done. But if you're not careful, that switch that you use to protect you is now harming you. Church, we got to deal with the trauma that made our hearts dry, distant, damaged, distressed, depleted. Because if you don't, out of it flows the issues of life. You got to know where you are. You got to know who you are. You got to know where you're damaged. You got to know how your heart is wired. You got to know how, how, how it is, how, how you are wired. You got to know, you got to know, and you got to ask God to touch this heart and make it a heart of flesh that's a heart of stone. Maybe it's not a money problem, it's a heart problem. Maybe it's not a relational problem, it's a heart problem. Body has this prayer. Eternal God, I believe that we have conveyed, communicated as much of truth as you wanted us to because we need to know the condition of our soul and maybe many of us are looking around and saying, man, my heart is dry. My heart is distracted right now. Got a lot going on. 
new job, new children, all these different type of things, depleted, distant. I just feel defeated. I, I, oh my God, I just feel damaged. Or maybe we're in a great season where everything is delightful, man. Just got a brand new home, just newly married, all these things working well in my favor. But Lord, we got to know what condition our heart is in so we know how to properly communicate it to you. Because you will not be able to heal what we don't reveal. So help us to reveal properly what we need to say to you. And maybe our heart is dry. Help us to water it. Maybe you've never given your heart to God. Maybe you have given your heart to God. And maybe you're just watching this on a rebroadcast. And maybe you're just watching this for the first time. Maybe someone introduced you to TKC. Or maybe someone tagged you. Or maybe someone sent this to you later. And you're like, yo, I did not know the condition of my heart. There is a heart fixer. He's a heart regulator. And just because you've been around him doesn't mean you're near him. Just because you've been watching church doesn't mean you are the church. And so in this moment, just because you've been serving in God's house doesn't mean your heart ain't broken. So in this moment, I want you and I to join together and ask the power of the Holy Spirit to come into the room or the space that you're in and say, Lord, fix my heart, fix my soul. Holy Spirit, you are a heart fixer. And in this moment, I don't want to be like Judas, the son of perdition to where I sacrifice my soul, profit and gain the whole world, but lose your soul. So help my brother and sister realign those that are saved, help them to identify where their hearts are and help them to deal with their hearts through the working of the Holy Spirit. And those that don't know you in this moment, I want you to repeat with me, say, Father, I am a sinner. I come to you as a sinner with a heart that's been fully broken and needs restoration. I give you my heart in exchange for your love. And I ask that you as Lord would rule over my heart, rule over my soul, rule over my body and rule over my mind. Father, I need a heart that looks like yours. And I'm asking you to do surgery in me even as I'm praying this prayer. That Lord, you would fix this broken heart and you would mend it and make it new. God, I'm asking you in this moment that you would take the seat of my heart and take throne of my heart. I want to be saved. I want to be right. I want to be righteous. So help me to find the spirit of God that restores and redeems. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to take rulership over my life and to make me into the Imago Dei, the image of God. I know it's not a prayer that makes me say, but it is a confession of my heart that allows me to repent. And so help me not to be remorseful, help me to repent because only you give us the gift of repentance. So Father, I am yours. Teach me each and every day how to learn how to live like you, how to learn how to love like you, how to learn how to deal with my own heart according to Jeremiah that is deceptive and deceitful. And God, I'll forever give you praise and honor and glory. It's in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Stay tuned to G Paul with some good announcements for you. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for the word. Amen. Guard your heart. Don't be distant, distracted. Don't let it get dry. My favorite prayers is out of Psalm 51. Create in me, O oh Lord God, a clean what? And renew the right spirit within me. Powerful message uh, from our pastor today. Amen. How many first-time guests do we have with us today? Raise your hand. Amen. God bless you. And if you're joining us online, uh, thank you for joining us, especially if you are a first-time visitor online. And if you are, would you just type in the response box, uh, first time, something like that. And just to let us know that uh, you were with us online for the first time. But thank you, brother, for coming and visiting with, coming and visiting with us when you could have gone so many other places. Amen. Also, if you're online, please like share um, on your page so that others can be privy uh, to the worship that we experience today. How many of you enjoy worship today? Amen. 
and thank God for being, amen, together in worship, uh, not only face to face, but also virtually as well. In terms of announcements, we do want to accentuate the fact that this is a week uh, to vote, and even though it is not the, uh, the general election, um, the primaries are just as important. Because those who are going to be on the ballot in November were choosing this week. And I remember when I was 17 years old. In fact, I've been in the politics ever since uh, 1976. I was 10 years old waiting for the election results for Ford and um, Jimmy Carter. And uh, back in the day when the televisions went off about 1130 with the with the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know if anybody, maybe I'm dating myself, but staying up late, and it was from that point, I couldn't wait to begin voting. When I turned 18, I think I've voted in every election, primary and general, ever since, because it was my grandparents and my foreparents that fought uh, to vote. And so if you're not voting and you're able to vote, you are doing a disservice to your predecessors and those who could not vote because of the color of their skin. So um, if it's too late for you to register now to vote for Tuesday, I would still go and register and um, and be ready for the general election. I usually vote by mail because I want to study all the uh, uh, all those who are running for different offices and the judges and, and all those things. So I do a lot of online searching to make sure when I give, give my vote, it is an informed vote. And, uh, and because the postal, off, postal service, they've been talking so much about that, I drop mine off at the elections office. Amen. So there ain't no excuse, all right? And also on Monday nights, we have been doing these Zoom classes. Um, our first, uh, first Monday of the month, we um, talk about the diaconate. So Obviously, everyone who is a part of the diaconate needs to be on there, but anyone can join just so that you as a member of the church can learn, well, what is a deacon and what do they do? We welcome you to become a part of that. And usually all the information uh, will be on um, the calendar section of our apps uh, in terms of the links. And we'll begin posting them also on our Facebook page so that anyone who is interested can join in the second week is the ministers and I've charged all the ministers to with some uh, particular task and they already know what it is this coming Monday tomorrow we're going to talk about the elders so obviously all those who are in eldership needs to be on it but if you want to learn more about the various positions and offices in the church we invite you to join and be a part and also, when we leave, we're going to make sure that we try to do this in an orderly manner. We're going to ask all the exterior sections to exit first. And we want you to exit to the doors on the outside. I'm going to ask all of you who are in the center sections, if you would just give them a minute or so to exit. And then when it's time for you to leave, you'll go out the middle doors. We want to do that uh, so that we can still be as socially distant uh, as possible. Um, and don't forget that when you leave here, first of all, I like to think that the church is like a locker room. This is a locker room where we gather and get ourselves pepped up and built up to get ready to go out on the field and play the game. Jesus said, the field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. And so the message today Everything that has been done today is to prepare you and I to go out on the field of your home, the field of your job, the field of your community, and apply the message. Amen today. And it was a powerful message, part three of how is your soul but dealing with the heart. Make sure when you go home that you're dealing with your spouse, your children, your parent, your sibling, or whoever it is that you deal with on a regular basis, that you are giving them, amen, a person with a delightful, that last one, a delightful heart. Amen? Are y'all going to do that? 
And finally, we need to follow God, love people, and change the city. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this time of fellowship. Thank you, God, that we as the church can gather in your name. And that we won't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as many desire to do. So whether people assembled in this place or assembled virtually, God, we have been together today in worship. And we say thank you for the church of Jesus Christ. That even in the midst of these pandemics, God, that the church is thriving. The church is still the light of this world, God. The church is still the lead agent in our community. And Father, I pray that as we go from this place, that we don't leave your presence. And that you go with us and go before us. That you bless and keep us. Make your face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. Lord, lift up your countenance unto us and grant us your peace. Peace within, peace without, peace all around. And finally, give us all clean hearts so that we won't have a heart attack, but we will leave and lead and live with a delightful heart. It is in Jesus' name we pray.